Hello there, cats and kittens. My name is Alonda Carter, and I am the Recovering Hunbot. I create anti-MLM content, so if that is your jam, you might want to consider subscribing. Hit that notification bell so that you know each time I upload a new video, and also give this video a thumbs up. Today, we are going to look at what does it really mean now that we know Mary Kay has pulled up roots from Australia and New Zealand. You might want to put down your party hat and your party shoes. If you would like to support me as a content creator, the best way you can do that is through my Patreon. There'll be a link to that in the description. There's three tiers ranging from a dollar to $10 a month and literally any amount helps. And now let's check out what does this really mean in terms of Mary Kay pulling up roots. On March 5th, Mary Kay announced that they were closing operations in both Australia and New Zealand. Now, this impacts those who work directly for Mary Kay at the corporate level. And it also does impact their sales force of independent contractors who were distributing their makeup. Now, let me just give you some perspective. Ford, General Motors, and Toyota stopped production in Australia. Overall, the medium to large size sedan sales, you know, experienced a very steep decline. Also, the government industrial policy is very strict in Australia compared to other countries. In 2019, more than 50 companies shifted production within China to a different area in the world, including Apple, Nintendo, and Dell. And this is all due to the trade war. Also, you might be really surprised if you looked at the stores in 2019 that closed or are closing within the US. In fact, if you really think about it over the course of your lifetime, you have seen businesses come and go. Some companies were around for many years and then just vanished into the sunset. Just this week, my favorite sandwich shop, Texadelphia, which was right by us walking distance, closed. Why? business, lack of sales. This is really no different than Mary Kay pulling out of Australia and New Zealand. This is not an anomaly. This is not something that we should just like be busting out our party plans, you know? My guess is that they had a plan in place to reallocate their resources to areas of the world where they see higher ROI, which is return on investment. And it's not the first time for Mary Kay to up and leave a country. In 2013, 4,500 distributors in India were impacted when Mary Kay pulled out of India. The reason Mary Kay left was due to regulatory concerns and poor sales. Mary Kay had entered India in 2007 and had invested $20 million to do so. In 2018, Avon pulled out of Australia and New Zealand. There were more than 21,000 Avon representatives at that time. And also there was a staff that worked directly for Avon of about 220. They all had an uncertain future at that point in time. Now, according to the Mary Kay website in 1971, the company headed to Australia and that's when they opened up shop. This just highlights that longevity does not equate, you know, being armor proof, so to speak. Australia has many MLMs, and some of the most popular ones include doTERRA, Kayani, Viducci, Giunese, By Design, Plexus, Elepreneurs, Usada, and Volantis. MLMs are also plentiful in New Zealand. Popular ones include Relive International, AIM International, Neolife, Herbal Life, Promos Systems, and Amway. Nature Sunshine Products, and Nutrametics International. Here are a few posts that I found from Mary Kay Huns on Facebook. I am um, sure it's really hard on them. I mean, anytime something like this happens, it's hard. And let me just add in like a quick little story time. Back when I was an undergrad, I was a server. And I remember one day going to go to work, to work lunch, and the restaurant had shut down. The thing to remember though, in terms of Mary Kay, most people that are earning an income or say they're earning an income is typically smoke and mirrors. Mary Kay rips by a lot of the makeup, you know, just to hold rank. The other week I spoke to Misplaced Faith and we talked about their experience about being recruited for Amway. Well, their mom, had a room full of Mary Kay, you know, 
as they were growing up. So this is not something new. I'm sure that the people over in Australia have quite a few products on hand. I am just kind of wondering though, you know, like with all that extra product laying around, if any of it is expired. This is a screenshot of Australia's Direct Selling Australia website. As you can see, they have MLMs that fall into all kinds of categories. When honing in on Mary Kay worldwide, there are over 2 million Mary Kay representatives. So what does this mean now that we know Mary Kay is leaving New Zealand and Australia? Overall, those, you know, there, there will be some like, you know, uncertainty especially those who actually worked for, you know, Mary Kay directly. The distributors, I mean, when we examine, you know, income disclosure statements, what we see typically is that only 1% are making any kind of money. So let's just make this math simple and say that there were a thousand reps for Australia and New Zealand combined. That would mean 10 people within those two countries are losing their income because Mary Kay pulled out. Now, others had the illusion, you know, they thought they were going to be making money. Chalupa and Tamale are playing behind me, so you might hear dogs rustling. That's what I think is really going to happen. The likelihood of those top huns seeing the problem overall with MLM, in my opinion, is slim due to cognitive dissonance. They have to hold firm in their belief that MLM is the way. Otherwise, they would need to admit that their actions are harmful to others. Cognitive dissonance refers to a situation that involves contradictory beliefs or behaviors. So even though this big company has left, these Huns will just cling to the fairy tale and look to a new company that has products that they're being told, you know, sell and that they will be successful with. They will just move on. And here are a whole bunch of different companies that sells makeup within Australia. I'm sorry, I did not look it up for New Zealand and probably most of these are over there too. An article dated February 22nd of 2019 appeared in the feed states, consumer advocates are now calling for laws banning pyramid schemes to be updated to capture multi-level marketing businesses that are misleading the public. Consumer law experts are calling for greater oversight of multi-level marketing schemes, saying legislation has failed to keep pace with the rapid spread of digital MLMs. Now, could this have been something that impacted Mary Kay's choice to leave Australia? Possibly. I don't know. But I do find it interesting. Now, let's put the whole Mary Kay left Australia and New Zealand into perspective. The population of Australia and New Zealand combined come nowhere close to the population of India. Closing in Australia and New Zealand is a drop in the bucket. The time you should put on your party shoes is if and when Mary Kay starts closing all doors across the globe. In other words, you see a pattern. We don't have a pattern yet. We just see Mary Kay up and closed. The time you should put on your party shoes is if and when Mary Kay closes all doors across the globe or you begin to see a pattern emerging and they start shutting down in country after country. I know that the anti-MLM community wants to think, gee, we are making a difference and we are, but we did not shut down Mary Kay in Australia and New Zealand. This is something a business plans for and then executes. 
Now, I don't know which country is the most profitable for Mary Kay overall, or which country where they might be growing at. However, Mary Kay's annual revenues are over $500 million. Any company is going to cut their losses in areas that are not profitable. It's really as simple as that. I hope this provided you some clarity on what this really means that Mary Kay shut down in Australia and New Zealand. Again, I'm saying don't put on your party shoes, don't put on your party dress, don't start dancing like it's 1999, none of that. We need to see a pattern established and we're not seeing that yet. Clearly, there are so many MLMs in Australia and I just showed you only the makeup ones. There's plenty others. So these Hans will just shift. That's typically what happens. And maybe some of those who weren't successful, they'll just decide it wasn't for them. Or maybe some of them have heard through the anti-MLM movement that it's just not a good idea. I don't know, but I don't think this is anything we should get all revved up about until we see a pattern. If you like this sort of content, make sure that you like this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what your thoughts are about Mary Kay shutting down in Australia and New Zealand. What do you think that it means for other reps around the world? If we want there to be change in this world, it is important that we speak out. And that's what we do here in the anti-MLM community. We speak out against a business model that we know is destructive for most people. And remember, change starts now.